I'm in this area looking just for a normal, everyday, common crab, like the most common crab you can find, or you used to be able to find, on these Tasmanian beaches. Rock after rock, what am I finding? The porcelain crab. Stacks of these guys, they're everywhere. It's like they've overrun the place. Back in the 1970s, this was the most common crab there was. Now, I'm looking at the porcelain crab being the most common crab. And I have to go searching for what I used to consider the most common crab. So, I don't think it's a matter of you know them eating. I think it's just out competing. And even though the porcelain crab is actually a filter feeder and they, it actually eats different, I think it's just competing for habitat, for space. Uh, the porcelain crab is just taking over the space of our normal Tasmanian shore crabs. Ah, uh, here's one of my favourites, the spider crab, or the, in this case, the decorated spider crab because it puts seaweed on its back. But look underneath, it's a little bit spider-like. In fact, most of these crabs, they're all a bit spider-like. It is believed that spiders have evolved from crabs. So spiders, crabs, they share the same sort of structure around the legs, uh, the top carapace of a crab is very much like the top of the head of a spider. Uh, so there's a lot of similarities there. But still, all beautiful creatures. These damn porcelain crabs are everywhere. I first noticed porcelain crabs coming to the shores here in the 1990s. In the 1970s I was here all the time, never saw one. And in the 80s. Uh, so I was always looking under rocks, checking it out. So I've noticed not only have they sort of started coming in in the 1990s, but now they're almost in big proportion. Just trying to find the common old crab I used to find in the 1970s, and I'm having trouble. That's when I sort of thought to myself, these porcelain crabs are filter feeders. They prefer to be in water for their mouth bits to pick up just stuff in the water. Their claws are used for walking backwards and defending themselves. The other crabs I'm looking for, they use their claws like scissors, like a dining, like chopsticks, and they will cut and they'll stick things to their proboscis, just their mouth. Now, these guys can be out of water to eat. They can eat things that are washed up on the beach. So I'm looking for these guys. I'm going to go up closer to the shoreline where it's a bit drier, where not so much in rock pools where I used to find them, but maybe up in a little bit more of a drier area, I might find these guys. They might have the slight advantage over this damn porcelain crab. Now I've got a true crab. The porcelain crab is not a true crab, it's actually a crustacean which has evolved into a crab-like shape. Whereas this is a real crab, this is a true crab. And one thing you can tell about these small true crabs is if you look underneath you can tell if the male or female at a glance. Although the males usually have larger nippers and he knows how to use them, underneath there's a little bit like a tail which is flipped around underneath and on a female it's really wide and on a male it's very narrow. So I can tell if it's male or female just by the width of that little plate underneath. This is the female. See she's very broad across here. This bit here that I'm pointing to, very broad. This is another species of crab. This is a female and she is what we call in berry, which means that she's got eggs developing underneath that flap, which is why females have those big flaps there to protect the eggs as they're developing. And this fisky guy here, who's been in lots of fights, you can tell he's lost a few legs here, he's a male, and you can see how narrow that there is. So this little flap thing here, this bit that curls under, which on other crustaceans would be where the tail is, 
Uh, on males it's very very narrow, on females it's quite wide. So you've got this narrow male, wide female, easy to tell the difference between the sexes in this particular what I call real crabs. It's nice to see him go back to his little rock. These New Zealand half crabs or porcelain crabs, their bodies are really quite flat to the rock like that. Whereas a normal crab would sort of stand out a bit like that, these guys are really flat. I think that may be one of their survival strategies. The other thing is they may not have actually any natural predators here, and so they're just growing out of proportion. Um, our normal crabs would be predated upon by octopus, and namely blue ring octopus. I have also noticed in this area, I'm not seeing as many blue ring octopus as I used to. It's a bit of a concern, you know, you get a feral and invasive species into an area and it can upset the balance of everything. Let's hope that uh, we'll still get blue ring octopuses in years to come. Although some people might say I hope not, but I hope so, because I love blue rings. I hope you guys have enjoyed me looking around for crustaceans in this little area here. If so, you might be interested in checking out the How to Draw Friday show, where this Friday I'm going to draw a crab in a little bit more detail. I might draw some fun crabs and some detailed ones, and that's where we sort of really study and look at uh, the details a little bit more, and who knows, you might learn something there as well.